Well, with just a day and a half or so left here in Hartford before the end of the session, lots of work still to be done, and some of it's positive and some of it's not so positive. We're pleased to have from Greenwich, Representative Mike Pacino as uh, our guest on this edition of Meet the Leaders. Mike, always good to see you. Always a pleasure to be here. And as I say, some of the stuff you're looking forward to passing and others you're looking forward to killing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not always about always passing is. good legislation. Sometimes it's about killing bad legislation. Yeah. All right. So what is of particular interest and concern to you? Well, we're concerned right now with the, with the minimum wage uh, proposal that the Democrats have put forward. Um, you know, it's a laudable goal. Everybody wants to see minimum wages rise, but right now we're, we're, we, we can't sustain it. We can't afford to do it in the state. We need to get our finances corrected. We want to make sure that we're not driving businesses out of the state. And uh, that's a difficult thing for a small employer to have to, uh, a pill for them to have to swallow at this stage of the game. Um, you know, we talk about the uh, uh, food service industry, restaurants. You know, you've got, you've got people who are, are uh, struggling to get by right now, um, and then to have a minimum wage increase uh, be put forward that's going to take away from some of the kids who are trying to get these jobs because they're no longer going to be the number one individual that, they're, that the businesses are looking for. You're going to see the senior population come back into the workforce. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're really you're doing away with the incentive, incentivization of, of, a, of a worker to better themselves, to, to rise up the rung of that corporate ladder or even in a regular uh, uh, business. Um, you need to incentivize people to work. Um, and by having raising a minimum wage standard to the same level that an individual is currently making who may have been there for 10, 15 years, and having someone come in off the street and all of a sudden they're right at that same, you know, same wage uh, 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 amount, it's a difficult pill for them to swallow because now the employer is going to have to raise the salary of all of those individuals who have been there for 10, 15 years. It's a tough situation, let's tough, face it. Tough, yeah. Because, uh, and we want to help everybody. Yeah, we in want... this, this area, yeah. it is not cheap. Minimum wage is not a way that people can get by legitimately. Yeah, not not cheap really at tough. all. Um, but it's not always about you know putting the hand out and, and, and giving people you know, the, the, the uh, raise in their salaries. You know, there's different ways to do it, um, but we need to have those discussions. We need to have a, a frank discussion about maybe an earned income tax credit where the individual may not be seeing it in their paycheck, but at the end of the year mm -hmm. when they're doing their taxes, you know what, hey, I'm getting that same savings or, or I'm making you know, the same amount that I would be if I were getting a minimum right, wage right. where the states, you know, the employers aren't really getting killed. Um, right now, we've really got to keep the businesses that we have, attract more new businesses into the state so we can get this economy up and running. Now, uh, women's health is something that uh, has been focused on much in this in this session. We're still got some things hanging fire out there. Yeah. You come out in favor or whatever? No, we're totally, yeah, absolutely in favor. We've got a bill actually being um, debated right now. Um, it's uh, women's health. It's an, uh, an insurance bill um, that's uh, geared towards women who are uh, pregnant, um, making certain that the uh, infant uh, is covered for insurance purposes so that we can uh, give them prenatal care, you know, so that they don't come out, you know, when the baby is born, that it, there's no issues or anything of that nature. So those are good bills. You know, we had, unfortunately, we had a sexual uh, harassment bill that um, we don't believe is going to see the light of day in the House because the bill was uh, morphed into, there were two bills. One was a labor bill um, dealing with sexual harassment training which we thought we had a good uh, handle on. And then yeah. the other was at a judiciary, which was uh, re uh, eliminating the statute of limitations. Two bills on their own that had you know, a good standing, but then they were put together in the Senate and their, things were added to them that weren't palatable. So unfortunately, I'm not certain that that's gonna get called. Could be wrong, you never know what happens in this, so, in this so, house. You know, your synopsis didn't sound like it was that big a deal, uh, the two, no, but you then yeah. you're suggesting that other things were added that further muddied the waters around that. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. I mean, you want to make sure that these are important issues, especially, you know, sexual harassment in the workplace. Yeah. You want to make sure that these things are addressed, and they're addressed in a manner that's, you know, one, it's an informative type of a thing for uh, the employees, especially if they go into a supervisory position that we're giving them the uh, training that they need, but two, 
be doing it that's not, that's at no cost to the employer. So you know we don't want to we don't want to bankrupt the employers um, because we need to get the sexual harassment training. So there's a fine line. But when you keep adding you know different components and amendments to bills, all of a sudden a really good bill is turned into a pretty bad. Bill. Becomes something else. Yeah. What about the casinos? Did you come out one way on those? Uh, we're against casinos. You know uh, I don't think that the casinos are something that's viable for uh, you know. We've got so much going on right now between the tribes and the state of Connecticut. Um, I think they need to sit down at the table. I think they need to discuss, you know, really what it is they want to do, where we want to move forward with casinos, if we want to move forward at all. But casinos are not, uh, it's not a one quick fix. And once they come in, you've got a lot of things that get affected by it. Traffic, train capacity, um, you know, and in Bridgeport, Listen, we're going to put a we're going to put a casino that's surrounded by University of Bridgeport, Fairfield University, Sacred Heart University, Quinnipiac, and then all of the community colleges, Housatonic, and some of the others. I don't want to put those kids, you know, sur surround those kids with a with a casino. It's too too tempting. I remember back in the day, you know, you don't want to be there. It's wasting all of mom and dad's money. Mike remembers, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Uh, I never had a casino near enough. Anyway, listen, uh, really great to see you, Mike. Yeah, it was wonderful to see you. have got a real busy time uh, yeah. here in the next few hours. But and we, we're working we at it, you. though. You know, we're long hours, but hopefully it pays off in the well, end. Well, that's what everybody keeps saying. That, you know, you chug it along, it's, it's going gonna, it's yeah. gonna to end at some point. And, uh, a lot of work going on behind the want. scenes, that's of course. for sure. Yeah. Good to see you. Always Thank a you. pleasure. It's Mike Pacino of Greenwich uh, here. And, you know, lots going on up and down in the bills of the last few hours. That's Meet the Leaders for right now. I'm David Smith.